This screencast is on the Phillips curve. In this screencast, we're going to look at the short run Phillips curve, and we're going to look at um, what causes a movement along the short run Phillips curve, and then what also causes the short run Phillips curve to shift. Then we'll take a look at the long run Phillips curve and look at uh, what causes that to shift. So the Phillips curve. It's really important to make sure that you have the labeling correct along the horizontal and vertical axes. When we talk about the Phillips curve, we're talking about the unemployment rate. It's uh, measured as a percentage. And then along the vertical axes, it's the inflation rate. Um, and that's measured as a percentage change. For the graph, there's two curves. You've got your short run Phillips curve, also known as the SRPC, and that's downward sloping. And then you have the long run Phillips curve, which is vertical. And that can be labeled as, you can spell it out, long-run Phillips curve, or you can just put the LRPC. When we're looking here at this Phillips curve, what it's demonstrating is that uh, relationship between the rate of inflation and the unemployment level. And what you have to notice is that there's an inverse relationship. As the inflation rate is going down, the unemployment rate is going up which should make sense if you think about the ADAS model, because the ADAS model has the price level, which is the measuring inflation, the rate of inflation. The um, price level is along the vertical axes, and for that one, um, for the ADAS model, you have a real GDP or output that's along the horizontal. And so that's what's different here, is that when real GDP is going up, unemployment is going down. And so that's why you have this inverse relationship being shown with the Phillips curve um, for that. So when we're looking at things here, thinking about things that shift the um, AD and when that happens and you have an increase of it, well, when you think about an increase in aggregate demand, that causes, like from AD0 to AD1, that causes the price level to go up, and it also causes the output to go up. Um, the stock image here, right, these should be Ys instead of Qs, and these should be PLs. So, again, this is a stock image, um, probably not the best one to use here. So, when we're looking at that, if you have an increase in the AD, and price level is going up and output is going up also. Well, if there's an increase in real GDP, that means that there's a decrease in unemployment. To show an increase in aggregate demand, you would show that by doing a movement along the um, short run Phillips curve. Because again, an increase in AD, if we were at you, um, unemployment too, and you had an increase in AD, that would cause the price level to go up, and it would cause real GDP to go up and, or unemployment to go down. And so that's where you would be going from U2 to U3. So a shift in aggregate demand causes a movement along the short run Phillips curve. And then the other thing to think about is where would I see like an inflationary gap on the short run Phillips curve? Well, you have low unemployment, and you're usually worrying about inflation, and so that would be over here. Whereas a recessionary gap, you have a high level of unemployment, and you have uh, lower inflation, and so that would be over here U1. So it's good to know that um, where you could find these two um, on the SRPC. So the thing that you, again, have to remember is that a shift in AD causes a movement along the short run Phillips curve. Well, what causes a shift in AD? And that's really what we've been looking at, right? When the government steps in, either through fiscal or monetary policy, they're affecting the aggregate demand curve when they're doing that, whether it be through government spending and taxation through fiscal policy or through our three tools of monetary policy, can you remember what those are? If we're causing an increase in AD, that'd be expansionary monetary policy. So you'd be talking about buying bonds or decreasing the discount rate or decreasing the reserve requirement. Any of those would cause an increase in AD. Well, if you're doing that, that would be a movement. If we have this expansionary and we're at U2, it would be a movement from B to A because the price level has to go up and 
real GDP goes up, which means unemployment goes down. And so that's where you get this movement from B to A when we're talking about the implementation in the short run of the fiscal and monetary policy. Okay, so AD can shift, we know that, but the other curve on the, on the ADAS model is the SRAS. And when we talk about shifting the SRAS in the short run, that's usually caused through uh, supply shocks. An expansionary supply shock would be where the SRAS will shift to the right. This is where, for some reason, uh, input costs that are used through um, the production of most goods uh, decreases. And so that's where the SRAS will shift to the right. When the SRAS shifts to the right, remember that price level goes down and that um, output goes up or real GDP goes up. Well, if I'm going to show that I'm going to have the price level go down, and I'm going to have um, unemployment go down, right, because real GDP went up, the only way I can do that is by shifting the SRPC. So when you have a shift of the SRAS, you have a shift of the SRPC. And it's the opposite of the way that they go. So if the SRAS increases, well, then the SRPC decreases. I think it's helpful to, like, do the, like, each little bit and make your points that that's why I did this A to B here so that way you could make sure you know how to draw the curve so again the price level went down and then unemployment went down and so that's where this new dot is formed and that's how I then know I have to draw um, a whole new SRPC so the opposite of uh, the um, expansionary supply shock is going to be the contractionary or adverse supply shock and this is where you have a large increase in a resource cost that's used by many goods, and that's going to shift the SRAS left. And so if you have a shift of the SRAS left, that's going to cause an increase in the price level, and it's going to cause a decrease in the output. And Phil just thinks this is hilarious. And so what you have to remember is that a shift left of the SRAS causes a shift right of the SRPC. We didn't move anything with the long run Phillips curve. Um, we'll talk about that next, but that stays the same. So the long run Phillips curve, what is it? The long run Phillips curve is that natural rate of unemployment. It's our YF when you think about the ADAS model. And so the, the LRPC is really it's representing um, the LRAS unemployment rate. Uh, it also represents the Nehru, that, na that um, natural, the uh, non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. And the Nehru is also represented by the natural rate of unemployment. So all of those are what is encompassed with the LRPC. So it's really important to recognize this is like that 5 to 6% goal. So if they give you a question on a test and they say that, you know, the natural rate of unemployment is at um, 7%. Well, where am I going to be here then with regard to this graph? Well, if this is the LRPC, is that 5 to 6% goal, well, then that means that my unemployment rate is over here, right? And so that's where I'm going to be at, not at the um, NRU. So... Let's think about some things here that we've learned in class and how this corresponds with it. When we talk about expansionary monetary policy, that is a shifting of the AD curve. In this situation here, they were at the LRAS, and so therefore they're starting out at point A here is corresponds to the point A there. Well, they employ um, expansionary monetary policy. Maybe they bought bonds. And this causes an increase in the money supply and the supply of loanable funds, which decreases our nominal and real interest rates and causes an increase in CNIG, causing AD to go up and real GDP to go up, which and price level, which causes a decrease in the unemployment rate. So if, if I'm looking at that shift here, this a to B, or A to that increase to 82 is going to be represented right here. 
Well, that would be a movement, right, along the um, short run Phillips curve because it's a shift of the AD curve where price level went up and unemployment went down. So that's a short run adjustment, uh, fiscal and monetary policy. But let's remember what happens in the long run. So if in the long run you have this situation where you're at this point here with the increase in AD, well, then what happens is that in the long run people negotiate their wages. And you have an inflationary gap. And so therefore people will ask for higher wages. They'll negotiate higher wages. That's going to decrease the SRAS, and that's going to put you over here at point B. Well, that's going to cause a decrease in the SRAS is going to cause an increase in the SRPC. And so you're going to have this point here, a point C, that's going to be represented with this new intersection of the SRPC and the LRPC. Because again, it should be an F, right? The, again, we're getting here to our full, um, full employment, and that's represented here at this U2. Those are the same thing. That's not shifting. When in the long run, we negotiate our wages, and that shifts the SRAS, which then also shifts the SRPC. So when you think about the expansionary shocks, um, and those happen in the long run. It's not the expansionary shock. That's the short run. The long run is that we negotiate our wages. And so if you have an expansionary shock and you're starting off at your original, well, that's going to increase the SRAS. And then you're going to have an inflationary gap. And then you're going to have people negotiate their wages. And that's going to push it back here to the original SRAS1. That's the infinity sign. It all comes back. Like whenever we're doing things, if there's an inflationary gap, it's going to come back to the full employment. If there's a recessionary gap, it's going to come back to the full employment output. So the shifting that you have here um, of the SRAS first increasing and then decreasing after negotiating the wages is happening here. At first, you had a shift to the right of the SRAS, and so you're going to have a shift left of the SRPC after they negotiate their wages. You shift left with the SRAS back to the SRAS1, and you're going to shift right with the short run Phillips curve. Again, never changing that goal of that 5 to 6 percent, which is here at the unemployment rate. So the other thing just to remember, too, is about the long run and what shifts the LRPC. Think about what shifts the LRAS. If you have an increase in the LRAS, then that is going to um, not change the unemployment rate, right? But you're going to have that affecting um, the, the different um, things. And so the unemployment rate will stay the same. Um, but when the LRAS is growing, um, then you're also going to have a movement, a, a shift that comes along with the LRPC.